with the trigonometry, but in right angle triangles. Okay, so um, the goal for today's lesson is to be able to find measure of sides and angles in right triangles using trig ratios for Sokato. Okay, just get used to the word trigonometry, trigonos, trigonometry ratios. Okay, sometimes you see them in some textbooks that they say primary. Trigonometric ratio, which is the same thing. Primary trig ratios are the sine, cosine, and tan. Okay, these are the four primary ones. So, right triangles have a perk. Yeah. <laughs> or a right angle, right? The sum of all angles equal to. That's the interior angles of a triangle. No matter what kind of triangle it is, all the sum of the interior angles is going to be 180. Capital letters go for the angles. <coughs> and lowercase letters go for the sides. Now, in a right angle triangle, In a right angle triangle, if I know two sides, yeah, so I can use a Pythagorean theorem. If I know two sides and I'm looking for the third, okay, that, we, that means I can use the Pythagorean theorem, which is a squared plus b squared equals c squared, or whatever c squared equals a squared plus b squared. But remember the other two versions, right? What would it be if I'm looking for b? And that is to find the third side, okay? Pythagorean theorem, you don't know how many times people get a question on a, t on a test and they have two sides, they're looking for the third and they stand and they look for like 20 minutes, what do I do here? Anytime in the right angle triangle, you know two sides, you're looking for the third, you're gonna use Pythagorean theorem, okay? For the other of the right angle triangle, so if I have an angle on a side, or if I have two sides, I'm looking for the angle, then I'm gonna have to use my trig ratios so that sine stands for sine formula is and that um, that's why we have so opposite hypotenuse. Okay? Cosine? Adjacent And ten. Okay. I forgot about you. <laughs> I'm recording my lessons, just so you know. <laughs> All right. Now, the important part is when you are solving any question is you need to name your triangle properly. Okay? You need to name your adjacent opposite hypotenuse property. Otherwise, your whole solution is gonna be wrong, okay? So, hypotenuse is always your longest side across the right triangle, okay? That's not gonna change. Hypotenuse location is not gonna change. What's gonna change is the opposite and the adjacent. And that depends on your angle of focus or your angle of interest, okay? So in this triangle, this is my angle of interest. Because I'm looking for this angle or because this is the angle it's giving to me, okay? So, this is my angle of interest, this is my opposite, this is my adjacent. Opposite is the one, is the side that's across from the angle of interest. Are we okay with that? If this is my angle of interest, right, now my opposite is the bottom side. And then the adjacent is the third side, okay? <coughs> So here are the steps, what do you need to do to find the side measure? Please stop me if, if there's something, if I'm saying this too fast, I'm just saying this too fast because I think you should know this, okay? If you are, if you don't know, stop me and say slow down, 
repeat, okay? First, you're gonna always label your triangle with adjacent, opposite, and hypotenuse. Then, you're gonna choose which trig ratio you're going to use. Do I have the opposite and the hypotenuse? Then I use, which one? Sine, sine, because I know the opposite and the hypotenuse, okay? If I know the hypotenuse and the adjacent, cosine. And then if I know the opposite and the adjacent, then I use tan. So I have to look at what do I know or what am I looking for. Write the formula, sub, use the calculator. Then, you're rounding your side length to the nearest tenth or to one decimal place unless the question asks you otherwise. Okay? So side length should be to one decimal place unless the question asks you otherwise. We okay with that? Here's a question. So find the measure of side P if angle P is 60 degrees. So where is angle P? So, oh, angle P. Angle P oh, is, okay, yeah, you're right, no, right. side P. So side P is across from angle P, so this is side P, and I'm looking for that. Okay? What's the first thing I have to do? Label, Label the triangle with? Opposite. <coughs> okay. So, where is my hypotenuse? 225. Okay. Where is my uh, opposite? And where is my adjacent? Uh, Perfect. What am I looking for? The opposite. Sign. I'm looking for the opposite. I'm not looking for the sign. I'm looking for the opposite. <laughs> you're, you're skipping. OK, I'm looking for the opposite, and I know the hypotenuse. So what formula do I use? The sign. The sign. <clears throat> no, no, no. I like it that you guys are enthusiastic about this and that you know the answer. I love it. So sine P, so I'm just going to repeat this quickly, because you are looking for the opposite and you know the hypotenuse, right? That means out of Sokatoa, right? Opposite and hypotenuse, so you have to use sine. So sine P is opposite over hypotenuse. First, I write the formula, then I sub it. What's angle P? Sine 60 equals to, I don't know what my opposite is, over 225. What do you want to do here to start this off? P equals sine 60 times 225. Yeah, so you're going to bring the 225 over. It's a division here. When you bring it over, it becomes a multiplication. So you have 225 times sine 60, and that gives you sine Make sure your calculator is in degree mode. Okay, and enter it in the calculator. So what did you get?
Find the measure of side B. Angle C is your right angle triangle, by the way, here. So find the measure of side B if angle A is 74 degrees. So where's side B? So just as a, as a quick reminder that the small letter is across from the big letter, right? So because this is angle B, side B is across from it, and this is where side B is. Okay? This is called side C in this case, right? And this is called side A. Okay? Remember, small letters represent the side, big letters represent the um, things. Okay. So my angle of interest is A. Where is the hypotenuse? Adjacent? The opposite. Opposite is at B. The opposite is, is at? No, 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 no. It's not. Oh, sorry. It's right. 40. 40. 40. Yeah. 40 is your opposite. It's okay. Where's my hypotenuse? Uh, C. Okay. And this is going to be your adjacent. What am I looking for? I'm looking for side B, so I'm looking for this. Okay. I know the opposite. I'm looking for the adjacent. Which trig ratio do I use? And OA and SOCA SOA. Okay, so I'm just going to write this down. I know the opposite. You don't have to write this down. I know the opposite. I'm looking for the adjacent. So because it has O and A, I have to use 10. So 10 angle A is opposite over adjacent. Replace B. 
Okay? You can, if you want, and you can write it as a two-step process. I'm okay with that, if you, if you prefer that. Or you can, right away, jump from this to this. Skip the middle step. Okay? So enter this in the calculator. 40 divided by 10, 74. me numbers and B is 8 over 13. What's my last step right now? Inverse the thing over Sorry? Inverse. Inverse. So here's how you write it properly. Hi, tell me. You're going to write angle B equals 10 inverse and then you're going to put your fraction. So in brackets you're going to do 8 over Properly write it. We still get the same answer though. Like mm -hmm. I divided it first and then it yes. Yeah. As long as you keep when you divide it, you're gonna get decimal. Yeah. As long you keep it to like four decimal places. Yeah, yeah, I did. Yeah. Okay. So what is ten inverse of eight over thirteen? Ten. Did you do ten inverse? of angle R and angle T. Yep. Um, you can do one first. Yep. And then you already know there's a right angle, so you just do 80 minus 30 minus whatever T is, and then you just multiply. Perfect. So I can pick which one you want. 
I want to solve first. So I want to solve R first or T first, doesn't matter. I should end up with the same answer, okay? So I'm just going to solve R first, okay? This is a right angle triangle. So I'm going to solve R. According to R, where is my opposite adjacent and hypotenuse? Adjacent and the hypotenuse, so what ratio do I use? Cos. Okay, adjacent and hypotenuse, so I have to use the cosine. So cosine angle R is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse. And to find angle R, what do I do? Inverse. So cos inverse. Guys, I'm trying to teach you also not only how to do the math, but how to write the math. Okay? So you're writing it as cos with an inverse so to the power of negative 1, and then bracket and the fraction. Proper way to write it. And that is going to give me... If you're not finding that on the calculator, make sure you come and see. 62 degrees. Okay. So we found angle R. How can I find angle T? Emily? 180 minus 90 minus 62. Yes. Because I already have two angles, and I'm looking for the third, the easy way to do it is to do 180 minus um, 90 minus the other angle. Okay, because we know that the sum of the three angles inside a triangle equal to 180. So I'm just going to write this. This means angle T. This symbol means angle T is equal to 180 minus 90 minus 62. And what is that? Angle T is 28 degrees. <coughs> yeah. I did a different formula, but they still got the same answer. As I said, you, yes, you, you can do it with a different formula. So you can do it with sine uh, Sokatoa, right? And then you can find it. But then this is the easier method, okay? So you can use another ratio to find, right? Because you know your opposite, you know your hypotenuse. You can use sine and do sine inverse of. 7 over 15, and you should be able to get the same answer. Okay? Which method is correct? Both of them are correct. Which method, method you should do? Whatever you feel comfortable with. Whatever makes my homework look cool. Any questions about this? Okay. The angle of elevation and the angle of depression. Very important terminologies that you should understand and you should know how to find, how to locate these angles. Okay? If I'm looking at an object, let's say I'm looking at the clock, right? I'm looking at, let's say, an angle of elevation of 20 degrees. What does that mean? That means if there is a horizontal line coming out of my eye, and there is a line diagonal going from my eye to the clock, that angle between the horizontal line and the line to the clock is my angle of elevation. So angle of elevation is always measured with the horizontal. Okay? So you see that this is your line of sight. It's a horizontal line. Right? And then the line to the object and then this would be your angle of elevation. So it's measured from the horizontal. Same if I'm looking down at the ground, there is a horizontal line, line of sight that's coming out of my eye, and then there is the line that's going to the object, and that is your angle of depression. So it is measured from 
the horizontal line. <clears throat> So here's what you're going to do. You're going to look at this example. You're going to try to draw a picture. You're going to try to do the question, and then we're going to take it up. 